Hello, in this presentation, we're going to talk about the receipt of payment and then making a deposit into the bank for that payment. We talked about both of these individually in a prior presentation. Now we're going to do them both at the same time, looking at the process of the receipt of payment and the depositing of that payment afterwards and the effect on the financial statements in QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been working with us, we will be continuing on the Get Great Guitars problem here. If not, that's okay. We will be working on the receipt of payment and the deposit of payment. If you have access to the backup file up to this point in the problem, then you could restore that by going to File, Open or Restore, and Restore the File. It would be good to make sure that we're on the same point, whether you're going through the entire problem or whether you start at that point because there will be data we're going to enter here and there'll be data afterwards and if we're on the same page be probably a little bit easier but if we're not working with the same set of data then we can still get the concepts of the receipt of payment and the, the uh, recording the deposit why do we need those two steps what are those two steps let's see those two steps in sequence i'm also going to have the open windows open over here so i'm going to go to the view tab and select open windows so we can toggle back and forth through the open windows the only open window at this time being the home page if you don't have the home page open that's going to be under company and home page now we're working down here in the customer section because typically we're going to receive payment right here from the customer so that's what we're going to do now we're going to get the payment from the customer now that implies of course that in the past we must have had created a uh, invoice so we invoice the customer now we're going to receive payment if we were to receive payment at the same point in time as we issued the goods in this case the guitar so we were selling guitars so if we sold the guitar and got payment at the same point in time we probably wouldn't be using the receive payment we would just have created a sales receipt at the beginning point so when we use this receive payment we're basically saying there's something happened in the past, an invoice, and that means that we did work in the past. Most service companies, a lot of service companies will be in this format, like a bookkeeper or a law service. They'll do work, send the invoice out, receive payment later in the mail. That's what we're doing here. So now we are at the point of receiving the payment within the mail. Now note within our process here, within our track, that's not where we stop. We we have another step to get to the bank and again if you're looking at the financial accounting in terms of just recording journal entries probably not used to this middle step this middle steps not something we typically have uh, just in financial recording we would typically think that if we got payment we're going to increase cash we're going to decrease the receivable but we haven't really gotten to the bank so there's a difference in the types of cash we here we have here here we have cash that is undeposited and here we have deposited cash, basically our checking account. The two things we want to have happen here, we want to differentiate those two. And we want to make sure that once it gets into our checking account, it does so in a way that it's grouped so that our books will match the bank books. So that when we reconcile matching our books to the bank books, a huge internal control that I highly recommend everyone doing, it will be easier for us to do that. It'll be easier for us to match those up. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to first put it into undeposited funds and uh, reduce the receivable and then deposit them, taking it out of undeposited funds and putting it into the bank in the grouping that we want to make it easiest for us to reconcile the bank accounts. So first we're going to click on the uh, receive payment. So you're imagining we got a payment in the mail here. We got a payment in the mail. It was from Anderson Guitars. So I'm going to say that's the customer that we have here. So here's Anderson Guitars. We could just type it in there, though. I'm going to start typing Anderson Guitars and then tab, and I would get used to that tabbing through. And you don't have to select a payment option here. here. I mean, it's not a required, but we're going to select just as a reference here what the payment is going to be. And we're going to say it was a check. And we got a check in the mail from the uh, invoice in the past. This was for... and. Note, we could type in the amount would be a check, but we, we could also just check off the invoice down here. So this invoice, original amount, amount due, we're going to say check it off. It's going to say we're going to enter that amount there if you check that off here. And we're going to go, yep. And then it puts the payment up top, shows us the balance still due down uh, to zero. Amount due applied down to zero. 
Note, however, obviously if we put less than the amount of the invoice, then we would still have a, a amount due down here from this transaction. We're going to have the date is going to be 0122821. And uh, we got the payment type. Here's the invoice that uh, we are referencing to. What's this going to do then? It's going to reduce the accounts receivable, the, reduce the amount that is owed by Anderson. And it's going to increase a cash account, but not our checking account yet. It's going to increase undeposited funds. So let's record this. Take a look at that. We're going to say save and close. Let's now take a quick look at our main financial statements and see if we can see what that did. We're going to go to reports. We're going to go to company and financial. Scrolling down to the balance sheet standard. Changing the dates to, and actually I'm just going to go straight to the customized so I can change just the date range at one time. So customize report. We're going to go 010121 to 123121. And I want a range so that when we drill down on the data, uh, we'll have a range within the transaction report. So I'm going to say OK. And what that does then, it only has one date on the balance sheet because it's as of a point in time. However, when we drill down on the data now, we'll have a range, a general ledger type, a transaction report by date that will have the date range. So if we look through this now, we're going to say that accounts receivable should be affected. So because uh, we're going to reduce the amount owed by Anderson, double clicking on that, there's the receivable. And it has been decreased by that amount. If we double click on that, we get back to our form. So there's the customer payment, closing this back out, closing this back out. We also know that we would think it would affect cash, cash increase, and that's what we would typically think in our normal journal entries. And it did kind of, but it put it into this undeposited funds. So now we've got this undeposited funds of uh, 430, and we need to go ahead, if we double click on that, we can see that it's the 430 there, double clicking on that, there is our customer payment. So I'm going to close that out. Those are the two accounts that are affected. We do not want this undeposited funds hanging around there after we deposit the funds. So we're going to have to make sure that we record that second piece of the transaction, that piece lowering or closing out undeposited funds and increasing the checking account. That being something that often gets mixed or miss missed by many people. And we ended up with this balance in undeposited funds and end up with trouble reconciling our bank accounts. So we want to make sure to take that, that second step. Note we also have the other report affected. If we go to reports up top, if we go to customers and receivables, we know that the aging report or the customer balance detail is also going to be affected. We'll see by customer that Anderson now has paid us right there, no longer owing us. So we should be able to match these out within our customer payments. And it looks like we're this is the case so far bringing the balance back down to zero. If we double click on that, we get back to our customer payment. Let's close that out and close this out. We still have our open windows over here, going back to the home tab. And then we're gonna do this uh, one more time, one more customer. We will then go back to the uh, receive payment. So remember when we select receive payment, we, we are thinking that we got a payment for something that happened in the past. So we, you're imagining we got a check in the mail and we're saying, hmm, and there's that check from that invoice we sent out in the past. And we're gonna say receive payment so that we can lower the amount due to us from the person who wrote the check or the company who wrote the check. That in this case being Eric Music. So we're going to say Eric Music, and again, we could select the drop down and find them, and or we can type in here. We should never have, by the way, a customer that is not in our list when we have a customer payment. It's never going to have a new customer that gave us a payment because we, we must have gotten a payment for something we delivered in the past. So unlike when we create an invoice or something like that, we might have a new customer. We might have to create a new customer field here. Uh, but in the case of a payment, we should always always have the payment. So we shouldn't have that that problem if you're in the receiving department where you got a, a payment where you see a payment for someone who doesn't exist in terms of a customer. Uh, we must have sent out an invoice to somebody. So we kind of should be able to tie that out in some way. So we're going to say tab and it's going to be a check again. And there's what we want right there, that 525. So I'm going to click on that. 
check that off we're going to say yes and the date is going to be the 28th that's what we're looking for and the amount due the amount applied down to zero the amount due this is the original amount this is the amount of payment and so everything looks good everything checks out so we're going to go ahead and say save and close noting what we think should happen here this should reduce accounts receivable for eric music no longer owing us money and it should increase uh, the cash account the account of undeposited funds so we're going to say save and close see if that's the case by going to the balance sheet still open in the open windows there's the balance sheet we're going to say that cash didn't go up accounts receivable went down though if we double click on that we see that we have this uh, 525 double clicking on that we see that there's our customer payment so closing that out what's the other side of this transaction what else is happening the undeposited funds is also affected now at 955.50 double clicking on that we see the 525 at the bottom double clicking on that we see that information once again there is that we're going to close this back out close this back out this 955.50 is what now we need to move to the checking account when we deposit it we're probably going to deposit it at one time because we're going to go to the bank at the end of the day and make all deposits at the end of the day grouping the deposits at that point in time in the same format they will be grouped on the bank statement thereby making our bank reconciliation an easier process so we're going to go back to the home tab and do that next step that next step being the recording of deposits when we look at the recording of deposits it does indicate with a little red two that we have two outstanding deposits meaning we have two items that we put into undeposited funds that need depositing so if we double click on or if we click on this one time we don't need to double click on it we'll click on it one time and uh, we get this pop-up item happening now if there were nothing outstanding we would just have this window and they would not indicate that we have anything outstanding to deposit we can we can enter a deposit directly uh, into that window but this window is showing us hey you've got a couple things that have been received payment from and that you should have like in your in your desk in your desk drawer somewhere in your office there somewhere in your in your establishment that you need to go to the bank and deposit and we're going to say that is true we're going to check those both off we're going to check those off those are the two received payments we've received in the mail the 430.50 and the 525 those are them and we're going to say okay and then it will auto fill this deposit screen we are going to the checking account it should default to our main account typically our checking account and we're going to keep the same date that's going to because we're depositing these as of the end of the day we got them in the mail we're going to the bank at the end of the day putting them into the bank this is typically how it would be the last time we ran through the deposits we uh, broke the deposits out in accordance with a problem trying to show the idea of depositing in different formats and also grouping the received payments as best we could to, for the problem and this is more like we would see in practice in that we would want uh, an internal control of whenever we get a payment we want to go to the bank and group those payments and deposit at the end of the day that is of course a piece of the internal control system one to have those deposits in there at a similar time as they have been received so that the bank can track them and we can reconcile everything uh, in time and two just not to have the deposits uh, in the establishment any longer than they really have to rather than have them within uh, the bank so this is this is the practice we would want to have there's going to be those two deposits we're going to have here here's the total amount that familiar 955.50 what is this transaction going to do when we save and close it's going to deposit it into the bank checking account should be increasing by the amount of this deposit the other side being undeposited funds should then go down down to zero so we're going to say save and close see if that is the case by going back to the balance sheet looking at the checking account and uh, we're going to double click on the checking account see what is in there and then this last item here here is our deposit double clicking on the deposit 
we see there it is so the deposit has gone into the checking account that is good the other side of it should be in undeposited funds note that undeposited funds however has gone away if we want to check the detail in undeposited funds just to make sure that that is what is happening here that's the other side of the transaction we have to go somewhere else other than the financial statements the financial statements not showing any accounts that have zero balances couple ways we can do that one uh, we could go to the banking and go to use register and typically when we go to the use register we're looking for the checking account but in this case where we want to we could go to any account so QuickBooks allows us a register with any account and if we go to the undeposited funds account we can say okay and we could see this activity there's the activity uh, bringing the undeposited funds to zero if we were to double click right on this little DEP then we would go to that screen where the deposit happened so that's one way we can double check the detail and say okay yeah it went down to zero from that transaction other way you could take a look at it is if uh, this is easier or makes more sense to anybody uh, you can go to lists and you can go to chart of accounts and there's our chart of accounts so this is kind of like our trial balance here but uh, it's going to give us our all of our accounts not just those that has balances within them and then we can go back to our undeposited funds and i think if we just double click on it from here it'll take us to that same register and then we can see that amount again and again if we want to check the forms that created these we can double click on those and there they are so that's going to be the process of uh, both receiving payment and uh, recording the payment going back to the home tab typically done in the same day so if every day we get payments we should basically be doing that we receive payment deposit the payment in accordance with uh, the grouping that we have there and then uh, the crucial thing we want to do at the end of each month is to reconcile this will help with our reconciling process reconciling our books to the bank account which is a huge check because the bank keeps pretty good records and if we if we can say our records match the bank's records then we have a pretty good idea over cash if we have a pretty good idea over cash cash being affected in all of these cycles vendor cycle the payable cycle or the purchases cycle the customer cycle or the accounts receivable or sales cycle the employee cycle or the uh, pay wages payable cycle or payroll cycle all of them are affected by cash and therefore if we're able to reconcile the bank account and say that our cash balance is good and double check it through an outside source that's going to be a huge check uh, not only for cash but for all of these cycles so it's a it's a big internal control and we'll take a look at that at a later time